Well, we told you about the weather and how it played havoc with the scheduling here at ETSU basketball, but it affected one young man's life that he'll never forget. We sat down with freshman forward Isaac Banks, who originally grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, but had to be moved to California due to Hurricane Katrina, and he was gracious enough to tell his story. I mean, this was rough growing up with my grandmothers. We lived, we was on food stamps, and it just was rough. Like, I seen a lot of things when I was young as a kid. We grew up in a household of like, like 12. My mom had me at a young age, so my grandmother and my grandpa had to raise me. Two months before Hurricane Katrina would hit, the Banks family would suffer a tragedy. My brother had gotten into some trouble, uh, like in the city, and uh, just, I guess, somebody retaliated and just murdered him. The Banks family, dealing with heartache at that point in time, got news that there was a storm coming. Years before Hurricane Katrina happened, you know, they had Katrina, hurricanes that were supposed to come through, like Ivan, and they never hit New Orleans. So my family was like, we're going to stay because, first of all, my family didn't believe Katrina was going to come at first, to tell you the truth. So we stayed. When the storm hit, Banks was across town helping his other grandmother. My dad's mom. I went, helped her move. And uh, it was me, my grandmother, I had two uncles, the one I actually lived with in New Orleans before I actually came up here to Johnson City, and my little cousin Derek. The waters was up to about six feet, so I was, you know, I was, in t I was 10, so I was like five, four, five, five, something like that. And uh, I, we had to like walk through the water. And at first we had to go, obviously, we had to go and get some food, obviously, because we didn't have nothing, because our kitchen was ruined. So we was in our house for about say six days and then they had some men in trucks came by and was like they're going to open the floodgates so the water's going to rise up to about 12 feet like and just in the area we was in either y'all going to stay in this or y'all going to come with us to uh, UNO the University of New Orleans so we kind of gather all out the things we could gather and we went to uh, UNO. Banks continues his story to tell you what went on inside UNO's arena. It was crazy in there lights no lights no nothing. I mean, when you go in the bathroom, you, you go use the bathroom, it's, you know, stuff all over the floor, you know. It's, it, it just wasn't a good scene. We was in UNO for two days, two days. And then after the, the, the second night, we went, we went lined up to get on helicopters. Like, we sat down like we was refugees, like just sitting down waiting for hours and hours till our line get picked to go to the nearest airport. So when, when we finally got picked, we got on the helicopter. Obviously, that was my first time on, obviously, ever on the helicopter. So we got picked, and we went to the airport, and then we had to sit in the airport for about 10 hours. They putting us in lines to go to the, the next stop, and we didn't know where we was going. While Isaac was able to get out of New Orleans, he still didn't know if the rest of his family was able to seek shelter. My mom's mom, that's who I lived with. Uh, her side, my other side was in the, the, obviously the Mercedes Superdome and I was worried about my, my other side of my family because that's who the world got to hear about, the Superdome. The world didn't hear about UNO. They heard about the Superdome and I just was worried about my other side of the family and I was just like trying to get in contact with them with phones and they wasn't really answering. And only when I got, in, I got in contact with my mom, I think a month after Katrina. Banks had an uncle that finally got him in touch with his mother. Uh, call your mama on this number or whatever. And then I, I called it and then she answered and she was, you know, she was just happy to hear from me because she didn't know what I was going through either. She didn't know if I was fine or, you know, she just was, she just, she was worried. Like every other mother in America, she was just worried. So the Banks family had to pick somewhere to live. They decided to move to Long Beach, California to stay with an aunt. My uncle was looking for a school for us to attend, me and my cousin. I was in the fifth grade and my cousin was in the third grade. So they was looking for schools for us to attend. And obviously they was looking for jobs. So I think all the schools was packed because a lot of kids already had came from New Orleans to go to San Antonio, Texas. I had an aunt who stayed in California, Long Beach, California, and she, uh, she told my uncle and my grandmother they could come out, we could come out there 
and live with her. We made it to Long Beach and my, my aunt was like, uh, call me in a week. So we was left in California with nothing. So we had to go in the hotel. Uh, we just, we lived in the hotel for two months, you know, Red FEMA and Red Cross helping us out. So we finally got into schools and my uncles and them found jobs. Banks spent three years in Long Beach, California, eventually moved back home to New Orleans where he played high school basketball and in the summer circuit after his senior year, he was spotted by Murray Bartow. And Coach Bartow, he, he came up to me one day and just, just seen my talents and he just he liked the way I play and he just wanted me to come here. Banks took a visit to Johnson City and thought it was a perfect fit for him. Me and my uncle described it together. It's like a smooth little area. It, it's not too too big like New Orleans. It's not too big like Long Beach. It's just you know nice little area. It's to get my obviously to get my mind off of a lot of things, big wise. You know, I could come here in New. I mean Johnson City and focus on you know school and basketball. It's no doubt when you talk to Banks, he is very thankful for the opportunity in front of him. I'll, I'll say I'm blessed, you know, blessed. And, Cause a lot of, a lot of things could have happened to me when I was young, but I'm blessed to have God, the talents he gave me, you know, you guys, Coach Bartow, this is just, it's just a blessing for me to, and then I won't take it for granted. I'm gonna work hard every day and work hard in the classroom and just make my family proud. And one member of his family in particular. My uncle, Derek Williams. Yeah, he, he, watched, he watched over me. He actually, I looked at him as a little father figure. Like he really took care of me. He, he watched over me just as much he watched over his own kids. He did the same things for me he did for his own kids. And to this day, if, I, if he could see this story, I thank him.